The best thing I've seen all year on Netflix has to be Blue Eye Samurai, which is weird for me to say because I'm not a huge anime fan. Hell, this might even be the first anime series I've ever watched for more than a single episode. And here's all of the reasons why this show pulled me in and had me binge watch the entire series in a day. The animation is frankly stunning. The animation for the characters and the action is so dynamic and just pulls you into the world that they are building. A fact made even more obvious by the stupendous backgrounds that this show has. In most animations, the backgrounds aren't a standout thing. You could just spend minutes gaping at. But at times in this show, I literally did that because they are stunningly beautiful. That's not to say that the action sequences aren't also hugely impressive, being fluid and dynamic whilst being visually impressive and impactful with all the top visceral violence where people lose limbs or are cleaved in two and it is also beautifully captured in a pretty unique animation style that adds something to the visual aesthetic that I think would be impossible to actually capture in a uh, live action show. Definitely one of the most beautiful animations I've seen in a long time. Moving on to the characters, they are all, at first glance, incredibly simple to understand, but like an onion, they all have so many different layers. Mitsu, the titulous blue-eyed samurai, is a complex and sympathetic protagonist, driven by a thirst for revenge, and in many shows, would be a righteous character whose motivations would rarely, if ever, be challenged. In a lot of these kinds of stories, they would rightly want revenge against the people who quite literally made them who they are and possibly cause the death of so many people close to them and the righteousness of this would never be questioned but in this show as the story unfolds we see she's actually a very flawed character and person whose lust for revenge may well be one of the bigger driving forces that make her life miserable she causes her own misery in other words the show constantly asks the question of the audience whether Mitsu would be better off just abandoning this quest for revenge. That's something hammered home, even more with her relationship to the supporting characters, who are all well developed in their own right and add depth to the story, having their own motivations and conflicts within this larger overarching narrative of revenge. These motivations and conflicts make the relationships between these characters believable and engaging, Adding an emotional resonance to the narrative, via the various characters we also explore the themes of honour, tradition, loyalty and betrayal in a nuanced and thought provoking manner, with all of the characters having their own complicated personal views on each of these issues, and these views can be seen as subtly changing as the story progresses. Which brings me on to the actual story. A gripping tale of revenge wrapped up in a larger story for the battle of the whole nation of Japan. It gave me hope from beginning to end, having many twists and turns that maintained the suspense and kept me guessing exactly where the story was heading. Much like the characters on the surface, it's very simple, but as the episodes go on and the tale unfolds, it gets deeper and more complex, opening up more and more avenues for the writers to explore the characters, their motivation, and the themes that they represent. If I had two criticisms of this show though, it would be the amount of times Mitsu gets stabbed and seemingly recovers within a few minutes because good lord, that happens a lot. By the end, their stomach must have more holes than a colander in it. My other major criticism of the ending is it is pure sequel bait. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see that sequel, get on it Netflix. It is one of my number one personal pet peeves when stories set up another story and don't exactly wrap up the original story, which is kind of what happens here. Blue Eye Samurai is by far the underway the best thing I saw this year on Netflix. I don't even think anything else comes close. A visual treat, but also manages to have highly compelling characters who live within a believably written version of feudal Japan, but has a gripping story and a whole bunch of over-the-top violence and sex. How could a show where a guy gets pleasured up the poop chute by a hooker wearing a dildo-nosed mask not get a wholehearted recommendation. And beyond the above two problems I already outlined, the only people I can see not enjoying this 
are the kind of idiots who just discovered that English has pronouns. So, of course, I totally recommend this series to you if you are a fan of anime, action, revenge, stories, samurais, a bit of dildo nose mask tomfoolery. Thanks for watching, something a little bit different this week, but if you enjoyed that, please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll hopefully catch you in the next video.